you still relevant and needed as a supply chain consultant in life sciences? Hi, my name is Stephanie Marx. I'm a partner at Tenspin Management Consulting. I have more or less 15 years of consulting experience and 10 years in medical device industry. And I'm really looking forward to discuss today supply chain management and value chain management with my colleague, Patrick. Hello, my name is Patrick Wolf. I'm a partner at Tenth Pin Management Consultants and my hobby is supply chain management. That, uh, and also looking forward to our talk today, Stephanie. Stephanie, you just said you're in, in consulting business for 15 years. Are you still relevant and needed as a supply chain consultant in life sciences? Good question, Patrick. I hope so. No, to answer your question, I think supply chain management and value chain management are more relevant than ever for life science customers and companies in this area. We have to remind ourselves there is a patient for which we are doing that and therefore a reliable supply chain is a core, st core or keystone for that. Um, if you think about the most of the companies in life science went over the last decade more global. They have focused on their core competencies. They have outsourced um, parts of their business activities. With that, they have lengthened their end-to-end -end supply chain from the supplier to the customer. And with that, they're coming new challenges and also that cost reduction and increasing efficiency and gaining for the overall corporation more profitability is relevant than always or in the past, I think the last couple of years with external disruption have teached all of us a lesson and make supply chain even more relevant than before. Patrick, to give you maybe a challenging question back, can you describe with me with a couple of words and really good, excellent supply chain in today's world? Happy to do so. So from my point of view, there are key elements um, which are needed for really a high performance supply chain. First of all, it has to be agile. It has to be robust, resilient. We talked a lot over the last four years. Definitely a supply chain has to be resilient, automated as much as possible. And also, last but not least, data driven. I truly believe that all of the players in the market have understood the need and have started to work on that. The level of maturity truly is different. Um, for me, more important is really to look further. What else can be done? Right? Because cost pressure is still there. Increasing raw material prices, increasing log logistics costs all of that. Therefore, I think one of the major tasks for the industry is to look into innovations, not only from the product side, but as well from how to streamline the supply chain. And you mentioned a buzzword, automation, right? If it's AI reducing repetitive tasks, finding ways of collecting data and feeding them into the process to be more preventive of disruptions instead of being a firefighter after the fact. I think there are still areas where companies in life science can focus on and improve their self. Patrick, I know that you are a pharma expert. What do you see in the pharma industry as trends or where companies do need to be prepared for for the future? The mega trend in, in pharma biotech is um, the trend and shift towards um, individualized trees, treatments. So what we've seen over the last decades was mass production of drugs, um, blockbusters, billions of, of packs being um, produced and delivered around the globe. Um, that era becomes more and more 
obsolete and, and comes to an end. So companies like be it uh, Roche or BioNTech, um, they heavily invest in, in uh, individualized treatments. Um, and remember in particular BioNTech, um, they started their journey with the mRNA based um, development of, of uh, cancer um, therapies. And uh, that is definitely, from my point of view, the mega trend towards more and more of those uh, individualized treatment. And that's a completely different supply chain setup, which is required, of course, because um, it makes a big difference if you have to produce and ship billions of, of packs um, or if you have to just deliver a product uh, of a lot size of one to the patient. So as you're a well-known expert in, in medical devices, medtech industry, Stephanie, and you worked uh, many years also in that industry. Um, from your point of view, what is what is a key trend or key trends in, in that sub-segment? Let's start with the product side, right? There are amazing products in the pipeline. There's really coming innovations to the market. And those also include um, products which are based on AI and machine learning. What we have seen in the last couple of years is that robotic gets a more common factor in that to support the doctors and surgeons with technology. The other trend is that we are seeing more products which are software based, which is not a physical implant or a tangible product, but that those products getting all supported with a solution, with a service, which collecting patients data after a treatment, really having sensors to measure and help the patients on their path back to a quality life. But those things require a combination of digital and hardware together to create a new ecosystem. And is it completely then also new approach how to bring them to the customer in quality and time and how to combine that? Because that I see also as a, as a trend in pharma. So more and more companies are becoming more and more a technology company. Um, be it that they build up capabilities in-house or they 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 um, buy external knowledge so again the example of biotech um they beginning of last year they they purchased a small ai startup company instadeep um, and they are heavily investing in that area um, with the help of of be it ai and machine learning to accelerate certain processes a different trend, right? It's now in partner network system. I feel that the connectivity between them, it's not just I'm the big player, I'm much more also looking outside and looking into with whom I can partner, with whom I can integrate, with whom I can share information and data. And as well, then we're coming into the other area of mergers and acquisitions, which are creating the need for different capabilities to be fast, to be flexible, to absorb those things very quickly. And all of that requires also from supply chain some adjustments and to make them really as a differentiator and custom specific. Fully agree. Maybe to add to your point um, regarding merger and acquisition, that's an ongoing trend, I think, over the last years, but that will still continue. And um, we as, as Tenthpin, we're doing a lot of consulting um, projects in the area of and on the subsegment of, of CDMOs, so contract manufacturing organizations. And there, it's, it's a key capability to easily switch partners. So, um, so be it that you're in a, a CDMO, but then you, you sell the manufacturing side and then uh, that former side becomes your supplier. So that entire ecosystem to, to switch easily roles within that ecosystem, I think that's a key capability I do see. Um, as we're talking about capabilities, and I think a lot of them come along with, with digital innovations, um, but what about 
a foundation? What do you think, Stephanie, should be in place before starting with innovations like AI, ML, uh, robotics you already mentioned? Absolutely. There is a big buzzword out there, which is the digital core, or I think I like to phrase it more as a digital foundation. That means it's not just one system. It's not just the ERP system. Doesn't matter which provider will put that in place. It's a combination of application and partner application, which you need to service your business. The foundation of that should be always harmonized business processes and they are enabling processes and value chain processes and if you have those well defined and of course they are always localizations they are always specific needs but if the core is harmonized you know what your core capabilities are and you map them then against your digital tool chain so that you have a clear picture what is covered where and how all of that works together this is what I would call the digital foundation. And then you can use that to accelerate the add-on of more innovative technologies, of AI, of robotics, of partnering with people, using also nice tools which coming up, which can then be added to that. Of course, it's complexity which needs to be managed, but everything starts with a solid core in the middle. Do you have maybe an example for us where digitalization can truly help the life science industry to improve the customer experience? Definitely. There's one. Um, one of our clients, they um, recently yeah, it had to integrate a, a smaller startup company. They were heavily investing in an individualized treatment for rare disease for, for children. Um, and that product is quite expensive and quite intensive to, to be, first of all, developed and also to be produced. And there, jointly with our client, we developed um, a digital platform to integrate all business partners within that ecosystem to really um, develop, produce and distribute this individualized treatment um, in an efficient and accelerated way. Um, to really save children's life. Stephanie, what are the three key takeaways of our today's talk? Patrick, I think the first thing is paradigm change in the industry. The second one is maybe supply chain is still relevant. Supply chain is a differentiator and can and should be a competitive advantage. And the third one is you have to drive your digital transformation and starting with a very solid and robust digital core. Thank you very much, Stephanie, for the great summary. Um, I really enjoyed our talk today and um, I hope all listeners as well. Thank you, Patrick. It was a pleasure. Thank you all for listening to us. And if you like, contact us and let's find out how we can help you.